soon many great multitudes came, drawn by the magnet of love. The brink men mistook for the banks of a stream was revealed on ocean's broad
meditate, to listen to these words on our affirmation for this week. Good health. Good health is more than a state of not being ill. It is a radiant state of inner well-being. Physical illnesses may be cured by medicines. No medicine, however, can induce that state of boundless energy which comes when every cell in the body cooperates with the mind willingly, joyfully, in all that it seeks to do. Such radiant well-being comes after the mind has been cleared of every shadow of unwillingness, of fear, and of doubt. When one has learned to say yes to life, and when one has learned to love. Now let's affirm together, first in a strong voice, my body cells obey my will. My body cells obey my will. They dance with divine vitality. They dance with divine vitality. I am well. I am well. I am strong. I am strong. I am a flowing river. I am a flowing river. A boundless power and energy. A boundless power and energy. And now in a regular speaking voice, my body cells obey my will. My body cells obey my will. They dance with divine vitality. They dance with divine vitality. I am well. I am well. I am strong. I am strong. I am a flowing river. I am a flowing river. A boundless power and energy. A boundless power and energy. And in a whisper, taking it deeper inside, but with ever deeper focus. My body cells obey my will. They dance with divine vitality. I am well. I am strong. I am a flowing river of boundless power and energy. And now silently broadcasting it from the spiritual eye tuning into that super conscious level. My body cells obey my will. They dance with divine vitality. I am well. I am strong. I am a flowing river of boundless power and energy. I am well. I am strong. I am a flowing river of boundless power and energy. And pray silently with me. O oh, mighty source of all that is right and good, help me to see my strength as an expression of thy infinite power. Let me banish the darkness of disease. It is forever foreign to thy light. Oh, oh. oh. peace. peace. Amen. Amen. Good morning, friends. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday service. Welcome to all those joining us online as well. My name is Dharma Devi, and this is my husband, Narayan. And this is a reading from Rays of the One Light, Weekly Commentaries on the Bible and Bhagavad Gita by Swami Kriyananda. And this is week 14, Palm Sunday. Who is this Son of Man? Truth is one and eternal. Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. The following commentary is based on the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. On Palm Sunday, the throng joyfully acclaimed Jesus Christ as he entered Jerusalem, casting palm fronds before him and singing, Hosanna, blessed he is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord bless the King of Israel. Jesus Christ had told the people, the Son of Man must be lifted up. His reference, so we are told, was to the mode of his impending crucifixion. Some persons on that occasion had asked, Who is this Son of Man? Was Jesus a human being merely? Those who on Palm Sunday called him King little realized the actual nature of his kingdom. He was far more than what they imagined. 
Yes, of course he ate, drank, walked, slept, and talked like others. His consciousness, however, was centered in infinity. Yes, again, he laughed like others, but his laughter expressed divine joy, not mere merriment. Again, he wept like them, but never with human grief. The tears he shed were for the sufferings of unenlightened human beings. Never were they shed in self-pity. Jesus Christ was wakeful in God. Most people, by contrast, are asleep spiritually. How strange to reflect that less than a week from that entry into Jerusalem, so joyfully acclaimed, he would be arrested, condemned, and crucified. Such is the bitter sweetness of human existence. Smiles of welcome one day, insults, even persecution the next. How few realize that Christ's suffering would not be for himself, but for people's ignorance. For those who had not yet understood the deeper reality that dwelt also in them. Everyone is born trailing clouds of glory, as the poet Woodsworth put it. Even the meanest beggar has lived a story or will eventually have lived it more magnificent than the greatest epic ever written. In the Bhagavad Gita, this dichotomy between the Son of Man and the inner Son of God is beautifully described. Sri Krishna, represented, representing God in human form, reveals his true nature in infinity. In the 11th chapter of that great scripture, his chief disciple Arjuna exclaims, O oh, infinite light! Thy radiance spreading o'er the universe shines into the very darkest abyss. Thy voice overwhelms the roar of cosmic cataclysms. Lo, the myriad stars are thy diadem. Thy scepter radiates power everywhere. O immortal Brahman, Lord of all, again and again at thy feet of infinity, I lie in prostration before thee. Thus, through Holy Scripture, God has spoken to mankind. funny that the affirmation today was on good health because I had an experience of ill health uh, this past Thursday. I got food poisoning and I went down you know, pretty fast. You know how I think they say in psychiatry when you're facing death, you go through these like five stages. It's like denial, <laughs> anger, <laughs> bargaining, uh, depression, and then acceptance. <laughs> At first, I was absolutely denying that there was anything wrong with me. I was like, my body was shaking. I was like, well, my body might not be well, but I'm fine. <laughs> Which is true. This is good. That's why I wouldn't say the same. And, and then, uh, when I got home, Dharma Day said, well, I'm just going to give you some golden seal. She's always got tinctures and healing <laughs> remedies. And she gave it to me. And as soon as it went, it went down, it came back up. Oh. So I have, but after that experience, I, you know, I was sort of had a headache and it was convalescing. Um, and I said to Dharma Dee, so did you, did you tell, you know, Keshe and Zoe that I regurgitated? <laughs> and, uh, I, I, and, I, and then uh, our friend Barbie texted and I said, well, did you tell her that, you know, I was the, the most violent uh, <laughs> time I got sick of my life? I had this like pride of puking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they talk about the meannesses of the heart. You know, we have to be on guard. <laughs> you know, but the truth is, this is a very important topic. You know, to think of, we have to think of the scene here in Jerusalem to set up Palm Sunday and what happened. You know, the, the, 
the curtain hadn't yet really risen yet. Christ hadn't fully revealed his greatness. He had performed many miracles. He had just uh, raised Lazarus from the, the dead maybe a week or so before Palm Sunday. And there was, you know, a, a growing throng of disciples that believed in him, that believed he was the Son of God. And, you know, of course, we can we know how uh, the game of telephone is played. And so as, you know, some people actually did believe that Jesus was the Messiah. And of course, other people were threatened by that. And other people um, didn't even care. But with Christ coming into Jerusalem, if we think of that scene of the Pharisees, remember he even told uh, some of his disciples to go because there was a prophecy that the king of Israel would come uh, riding on a donkey. And he told them, go get that, go get a donkey and bring it. And they brought it and he rode it into Jerusalem because he knew of that prophecy. But if we think of that scene, if the Pharisees remember when they're there and they're telling him, well, can't you calm this crowd down? Mm. And he said, well, if this crowd were to quiet its voice, the very stones would herald the coming of the Christ. And you know, it's, I had just randomly, well, nothing is random, right? <laughs> yeah. Opened an autobiography of a yogi. And Yogananda actually talked about Palm Sunday. I tell you, Jesus replied, that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. In this reprimand of the Pharisees, Christ was pointing out that divine justice is no figurative abstraction, and that a man of peace, though his tongue be torn from its roots, will yet find his speech and his defense in the bedrock of creation, the universal order itself. Isn't that incredible? That this is the difference, right? That the Son of Man being his body, the identification with the body, and the temple, but Swami is giving us the key here that this Son of God, he was saying, is the inner Son of God, right? The Christ consciousness that you can right, destroy, what did he say? Destroy this temple and I'll raise it up in three days. What do you mean? They, people were taking him literally. How, this temple has been being built for 50 years. How can you build it in three days? I'll build it in three days. But he was talking about, because everything is an emanation outward, right? From within, from within our consciousness. And that's why for, for us, what's the most important thing that we can do is to learn the art and science of surrender. And that's what I wanted to share this morning, is how we can go deeper into surrendering, into offering the Son of Man ourself, right? Our body, our personality, and transmuting it into the Son of God, into the Christ consciousness. And how do we do that? Well, this is why Yogananda came, right? And actually called in part his mission, the second coming of Christ, to bring back original Christianity, which is no religion, right? Christ didn't come to start a new religion, he came to awaken people, right, to that Christ reality. We were watching last night, so beautiful, uh, Jesus of Nazareth. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie. And there's such a moving scene in particular, the prodigal son scene, where Jesus is picking, gathering his disciples. Uh, you may recall Matthew is a tax collector, and he worked for the Romans, and he, you know, he he gave the Israelites a hard time. And then uh, Jesus, of course, had the disciple Peter, right? One of his closest disciples, his rock. And uh, Peter did not like Matthew, right? They were not friendly because Matthew worked for the Romans and he took money from them. And, you know, Peter was a hardworking fisherman. And then Christ's love was so great, just like that beautiful, thank you, Keisha, for that song that Keisha is saying that, Christ, his love, the magnet of his love was so strong, right? It couldn't be, it couldn't be bound. Isn't that, you know, if we, when we think about magnetism too, it's not, it's something that transcends form, 
it, it goes out like a silent radio song. And so that radio song drew Matthew. It drew uh, Gentiles, right? Non-Jews, anyone. Every, like Christ said, everyone is welcome at my Father's table. And so Peter did not like this, right? He had a little bit of the pride of pedigree. And that pride of, well, you know, I'm, a, I'm one of the close, I'm one of the chosen one. How can my master go and be this den of iniquity, right? With, uh, they're, they're drinking, it's wine, booze, and sex. And how can he go there? And Christ goes to Matthew, and Matthew receives him. And in this scene, as it's beautifully told in the movie, Christ tells the story of the prodigal son. And you see juxtaposed that he's telling it to Matthew, but then Peter appears outside of Matthew's home. And he looks at, at Peter, and Peter finally understands at, after Jesus finishes telling that story of the prodigal son, my son was lost, and he is found. Please try to understand. And then Peter's surrender is beautiful in that scene, in that movie. He just he comes in, he walks towards Jesus, and he just with tears in his eyes says, I'm sorry, Master. I'm just a stupid man. I think that's the first key to surrender. <laughs> I'm a stupid man. <laughs> we have to, part of uh, humility, it's not self-deprecation, right? As Swamiji taught us, it's not, uh, you know, thinking more of oneself, but we also have to practice humility. Yogananda said also is self-honesty. We have to be honest. And part of it is when we're guided by our intellect, we are a stupid man. <laughs> uh, what did Krishna say to Arjuna in the Gita? Uh, Arjuna represents us, the devotee, right? And he has that, oh my God, right? He's trying to meditate and he says, my Lord, the mind, it's, it's so hard to meditate. It's harder to control than the wind. And how does Krishna respond? Yeah. <laughs> it is. He doesn't say, oh, man, get with it. It's, yeah. It's, it is the pearl of great price, right? We can't go to Ralph's for it. We can't go to a discount store. It is that pearl of great price. And how Krishna responds is that the mind, undoubtedly, mighty armed Arjuna, he says, undoubtedly, the mind is fickle and unruly. It's a perfect word. I am a stupid man. Right? <laughs> the mind, is, when we're guided by our intelligence, the mind is just, it's fickle. What does that mean, right? It just wavers. It doesn't have any loyalty. What is Palm Sunday about? It's about having the loyalty to the Christ consciousness. How can we be loyal to Christ? To, to the Christ within us, to the inner Son of God. It's surrendering. Right? our ego, and that is a spiral stairway of surrender. As Master said, that spiral stairway of wakefulness, it's on ever deeper levels, ever more moving toward thee, this chant that Dharma Devi shared with us, ever more moving toward thee to thy vast unthrobbing heart. We have to continue to surrender on deeper and deeper levels. And the way that we do that, the way that we surrender and the way that we choose the Christ consciousness and choose God in our life is to have that knowing. And what is Krishna goes on that undoubtedly the mind is fickle and unruly. But, he says, it can be controlled through yoga practice and mental dispassion and the exercise and practice of mental dispassion. Not getting caught up Right in the drama, that but the only way that we can be, detach ourselves is to choose the Christ consciousness, and that comes through the knowing 
right? And knowing comes through experience. Experience here we mean comes through meditation. But don't think that you're just sitting to meditate. Think that you're choosing. You're choosing the light. You're choosing the love of Christ. And remember, it's not a man. It's not another religion. It's just the same with Yogananda. We have this, you have it in the world of Maya, in the world of duality, that delusion tries to come in. Well, Yogananda himself, right, tried to battle this. It's not another sect. We're not, it's not Self-Realization Fellowship Incorporated, <laughs> right? It's self-realization. It's your realization. It's our realization. It's our individual realization and the way that that comes to us is that we choose the Christ consciousness. But how do we do that? We have to take the time to literally unplug, to disconnect from the maya, from the drama. And we have to do that consciously, actively, and fully. Just like as we engage so fully in the writing of screenplays, in the dramas of our own lives, we have to fully engage with that journey and drama of our own unfoldment into self-realization. And remember this, this trinity of the Christ consciousness. That's how we come to the Christ. We come to the Christ through the Divine Mother. Remember, that's part of the, the trinity. That in order for the birth of the Christ to come, we have to commune with the Divine Mother. And that is the Om, right? The, when we hear about, well, we need to read our Bible. We, we need to read the Word of God. What is the Word of God? And it is that cosmic vibration. It is that Divine Mother. And that is not an outer sound. We need to take the time to listen, to turn within, and allow that Christ to be born within us, to awaken within us. I wanted to share the whispers from eternity along these lines. This is actually Yogananda's introduction. So I invite you to sit up right for this. Close your eyes. I was deaf, but eternity whispered to me unceasingly. My wisdom's hearing power slowly woke, and I heard the whispers of eternity ever clearer in response to my sacred demands. I asked eternity, what do thy whispers mean? Thy whispers grew stronger until at last, quite suddenly, eternity answered, hear the voice of uninterrupted guidance. I am God's spokesman, eternity. I have whispered to thee through the slumber of ages, awake, now thou art awake, and my whispers will never cease from saying, Wake all thy brothers, in sleeping minds everywhere. My whispers constantly work. Work thou with me through living eternal whispers that all may hear his voice. I replied to eternity, I will send whispers to all my sleeping brothers saying, Awake, get ready, come home to his perennial peace, and I will borrow thy voice, eternity when my earthly voice can be no more heard, then I will continue to utter through thee, O oh, listen to his all-solacing soul whispers. I shall wait for all, uttering to them eternity's whispers, as my countless human brothers and also beasts and atom sparks all slowly travel toward their final freedom their long train seemingly endless, I will softly say through these whispers from eternity, awake, let us all together go home following the whispered summons of his ever calling voice.